Hello everyone and welcome to Trestle Field at the George Finney Stadium here on the campus of Baldwin Wallace University. We have non-conference women's soccer action this evening as the Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets will play host to the College of Worcester Fighting Scots. BW comes into this contest with a 4-5 and five overall record. They have won three of their last four. Worcester enters at 5-4 and four overall, winners of three straight contests. Before tonight's opening kickoff, let's run down the starters. First for the College of Worcester. In goal, Kyra Steef. On defense, Maya McDonald, Kelsey Stone, Abby Showalter, and Lily Glaza. The midfielders are Alexa Bendick, Holly Thompson, Naomi Mann, and Lindsey Moore. And the forwards, Mayora Wiley and Hallie Kriz. Kriz. For the Bolton Wallace Yellow Jackets, the goalkeeper is Katie Scott. In front of her on defense, Andrea Scatino, Anna Wenzinger, Amanda Donahue, Haley Schwadi. The midfielders are Bella Regal, Alicia Watling, Brandy Philippi, and the forwards are Ella Barth, Sydney Rice, and Natalie Stewart. For the Fighting Scots, Steve has made five starts. She's played nearly 400 minutes. She's allowed only six goals. Good for a 1.40 goals against average. She's made 20 saves and posted a 769 save percentage. She is 4-1 overall. Taking a look at the Yellow Jackets, Katie Scott in 585 minutes over nine games. She has a one, or seven games rather. She has allowed nine goals. One, a 1.38 goals against average and turned away 33 shots on goal. She has a 786 save percentage. Worcester kicks the ball off and it goes out of bounds, so it'll be throw in for the Scots here on the near side. Worcester in their road of black uniforms with gold lettering, numerals, and sleeves. The Yellow Jackets in their home whites with brown numerals and lettering with gold trim around both. BW going from left to right across your computer screens. The Scots right to left. Kyra Steef sends the ball out of bounds 40 yards away from the net. So BW will have their first throw in of the evening. Doing the honors for the Yellow Jackets is Anna Wenzinger. BW can't hold possession for long. And now... The Scots are going to push for possession. They will get it as the ball last touched the Yellow Jackets. Taking the throw in for the Scots, Lily Glaza. Crees with the ball, 30 yards out from goal. She sends it in trying to set up a teammate, but Scott is there to scoop it up, and she will throw it out to one of her teammates. Yellow Jackets do not retain possession for long, however, as the Scots will get the throw in. And they will get another one as the ball ricocheted off of one of the Yellow Jackets. Myora Wiley tried to hold possession for the Scots there, but unable to do so. So a lot of back and forth. Nobody's really able to establish anything here in the first two and a half minutes of the contest. 45-minute halves, brief halftime in between for the teams. Worcester trying to hold it in, and they will. It won't retain possession for long, however, and BW pushes it up near midfield. B 
BW was whistled for a foul, and Worcester will have a free kick coming up. For the Scots, players you have to watch out for, Myora Wiley. She has five goals with four assists for 14 points. She's also shooting 71.4%, so if she gets an open look at the net, she's able to finish quite well. Hallie Kreez in eight games played, has five goals with three assists for 13 points, and she is shooting 80%. Katie Shoemaker has four goals on the season. For the Yellow Jackets, Sydney Rice leads the way in just six games. She's tallied four goals, one assist, and nine points. She shoots 50%. She has 17 shots on goal. She has two game winners. Uh, Alyssa Watling has another game winner, as does Brandy Phillippe. Phillippe, Watling, and Michelina Rush each have two goals apiece and are tied for second in points with four. BW gets a shot on net. But Kyra Steef is there to stop it. Stewart and Bella Regal battling for the ball there for the Yellow Jackets. Neither able to control it, but BW gets the throw in. Ball gets reversed to the middle. Sydney Rice with it now on her right foot. Looking for a driving lane. It's not there, so she'll outlet the ball over to Anna Wenzinger. Wenzinger gets tied up, knocks down a defender. Now she's going to try to retain possession. And Worcester with the last touch, BW with the throw in. Wenzinger will uh, control the rebound off of a Worcester player. And again, she will have a throw in. And actually the official will switch it up, and he will give the throw in to the Scots, saying Wenzinger was the last to touch. Worcester trying to work the ball up the field, but it's going to be taken away by the Yellow Jackets. Andrea Scatino battling for the ball, and she will control possession before trying to outlet to a teammate. The Scots will get the throw in now. Maya McDonald controlling the ball. And it'll work its way up the field. Naomi Mann looking to start something here for the Scots. The ball gets fed back to goalkeeper Katie Scott, and she sends it up near midfield. Sydney Rice battles for the ball, and she will outlet it. It goes to Natalie Stewart. Stewart gets the ball taken away from her, but the Yellow Jackets will get possession back as chasing the ball down is Anna Wenzinger. Bella Regal now will feed it over to Stewart in the right corner. Working with limited real estate, she tries to get a shot on net, but it hits the side of the goal instead, so the Worcester Scots will get possession. Kyra Steef tees it up. Just on the yellow line inside the football end zone here at Trestle Field. But Sydney Rice is there to take it. She will put a shot on goal, and Steef will scoop it up. She'll step into it, put the right foot into the ball, and it'll sail almost to midfield where Elisa Watling will get the ball. Foul on BW. Worcester will have a free kick. Kelsey Stone, one of the defenders for the Scots, will take the kick. 
Puts the right foot into it and gets it up to one of her teammates. That's Naomi Mann. She's looking to set something up. Now Mann in the middle. Again, looking to set things up, but the Yellow Jacket's there to turn it away. However, Mann says, nope, you still have to work for it. And as she presses the action, Crease with the ball. She'll roll it towards the goal, but Scott will be there to scoop it. After thinking about throwing the ball to one of her teammates, she'll now punt it away, get it to midfield, and the Yellow Jackets will try to get possession, and they will. Off of a last touch, out of bounds by Abby Showalter, BW will get a throw in. 36 minutes and 11 seconds left here in the first half, and we are scoreless between the Baldwin-Wallace Yellow Jackets and College of Worcester Fighting Scots here at Trestle Field at the George Finney Stadium in non-conference women's soccer action. The Scots get a throw in now, and that's Lily Glaza. She outlets it to Crees, but the ball goes out of bounds, and the Yellow Jackets will get a throw in near midfield. Anna Wenzinger will do the honors. She finds Bella Regal, but the Yellow Jackets quickly turn it over. Crees with the ball, looking for a pass to Mayora Wiley, one of the leading scorers for the Scots, but that is batted away by the Yellow Jackets. And now the battle for the ball continues near the midfield line. Ella Barth possesses for the Yellow Jackets. And she sends it back to Wenzinger, who will reset before kicking the ball down the field. Trying to get the ball to Sidney Rice, the Yellow Jackets' leading goal scorer. And that attempt goes by the boards and it goes off of one of the Yellow Jackets. So again, making the throw in is Lily Glaza for the Scots. Glaza kicks the ball off the shin of Sidney Rice and we'll get another throw in. The Yellow Jackets get possession now. Regal trying to chase down the ball over Man for the Scots will step in and take possession. She'll get it up to Crees, but Crees did not have a teammate flying up the far sideline, and it's a turnover for the Yellow Jackets. Stewart and Regal battling heavily for the ball, as is Alicia Watling. Worcester pushing the pace, but they pushed it a little bit too far, and that's a penalty. The Yellow Jackets will get a free kick from just outside the box. And Scott putting the right foot into it, gets it past midfield, but the Scots were there to take possession. Throw in for the Yellow Jackets. Battling forward is Natalie Stewart. She gets it up the far side to Regal, who tried the jump over the kick from Alexa Bentick, but she could not quite make it, and Bentick will now take the throw in for the Scots. Crees battling for the ball. She saves possession and gets it to Wiley. Wiley, the most talented, or not most talented, but the most productive scorer on the field for the Scots to start this game. Lots of action for the back rows tonight as both defensive units are doing a lot of work trying to set up the offense, but also trying to not give up any easy looks at the net, knowing how potent each leading scorer is for the, the teams. Worcester sends a kick into the BW bench, so 
The Yellow Jackets will get a throw in. They'll retain possession near midfield. Ball gets swung over to Sydney Rice. She puts her right foot into it, but is unable to get it to a teammate. Lily Glaza now will send it up the field to Mann. And now Lindsey Moore. The Yellow Jackets there to take it away briefly. And the ball's last touched out of bounds by the College of Worcester Scots. So BW gets another throw in in front of their own bench. Rice missed the header and the Scots get possession. It's Holly Thompson near the midfield stripe. Battling Ella Barth of the Yellow Jackets. And the Scots are going to get a throw in. Lily Glaza will do the honors once again. The first year defender midfielder from Royal Oak, Michigan, Detroit Country Day School. Getting a lot of work on that back line for the Scots early in this contest. BW with possession will send it downfield, but the Scots will drop back in defense and retake possession of the ball. Now BW with the possession. Wenzinger with the ball on the near sideline. She will send it up to Rice. Rice on the right side. She dribbles to the top of the box, lets a shot go, and it sails high and wide of the net. It will be a goal kick for the Scots. Well, the first real chances we've had at a good, clean look at the net, and Rice with a defender bearing down on her was not able to get as clean of a shot as she would have liked. Wenzinger tries to dribble through the defense, but Lily Glaza is there to send it out of bounds, and now the Yellow Jackets will get a throw in. Wenzinger is a senior defender from Columbus Bishop Waterson High School, and she, like her counterpart, Lily Glaza, is getting plenty of work tonight on the throw-ins. Wenzinger throws it in, and Rice is going to try to retain possession, and she will as the Scots will last touch it before it goes out of bounds. Wenzinger throws it to Barth and then come into play and try to take possession herself, but one of the Scots sends it out of bounds. So Wenzinger to Rice now. She'll head the ball uh, down the field. It'll get to Barth on the right side. Barth looking for a crossing pass. It's not there as one of the Scots stepped up, but BW uh, retained possession briefly. Now Mann will take it away for the Scots. Crees with the ball, and wow, the Worcester Scots almost had an opportunity there as there was more Myora Wiley leaking behind one of the Yellow Jacket defenders. Now Crees is going to battle for the ball again. She's going up against Amanda Donahue. She'll take possession. Now man out top, and she rockets a kick over the net. That was the best scoring chance of the night for either team, definitely for the Scots. And that sails high over the net. Man with a good look, though. BW's going to have to limit those opportunities. Naomi Mann doesn't miss too many times. Just one goal and two assists. Good for four points this season. Watling with the ball. She'll send it up to Bella Regal. Regal battling for it, as is Watling. And the Yellow Jackets will get a throw in right in front of the Worcester bench this time.
Wiley's tripped up in front of the Yellow Jacket bench. No call. BW will get possession. Rice battling for the ball. Over to Barth. Barth motors up the right side. She sends a crossing pass into the box. Looked like Natalie Stewart had a beat on it, but the ball sailed a little bit wide left, and Steve is there to pick it up. She'll put the right foot into it and get the ball up to midfield where one of the Yellow Jackets will take possession. Watling feeds the ball up now to Regal. Regal looking for Barth on the far side. It's a foot race to the line, and it is going to be a corner kick for the Yellow Jackets. Nope, they're going to say it was a goal kick. Last touch by the Yellow Jackets before it went on the end, out of the end line. So Steve will get the ball to kick it off. BW again gets possession. It's Stewart with the ball over to Watling on the left side. She tried to feed Stewart, chasing it down for the Scots. Bensick. And again, it goes over the end line. Last touch by the Yellow Jackets. So it'll be a goal kick for the Scots once again. Wiley with the ball now after the goal kick from Steve. Wiley tries to possess it through three Yellow Jackets. She won't be able to do it, but she is going to draw a foul on the Yellow Jackets. So it'll be a free kick for the Fighting Scots. Worcester with the best scoring chance so far as Mann had a look from the top of the box, but she sailed the shot just high of the crossbar. Kelsey Stone with the throw in. She finds Holly Thompson. And a shot attempt is wide of the goal, and BW will try to track it down. It's Barth. Hustling after the play, gets the ball up the field to Rice. Rice with the last touch, and it's going to be a throw in for the Scots. Good hustle and recovery by the Yellow Jackets. They didn't overcommit and give a shooting lane to the Scots there, who had driven deep into the box. Rice with the ball for the Yellow Jackets. Tries to work up the right side of the field. It's not there. The Scots will be there for the takeaway, but BW will return the favor. And possession trades back and forth. Stewart now trying to set up a teammate, but the Scots were able to take it away. And Worcester will get the throw in. Wiley, the intended target on that throw in, just sailed a little bit out of her reach, and the Yellow Jackets will get possession. It's Barth again on the right side. Wenzinger with the ball now across midfield. She's looking for Rice. Rice with a step on one defender. Is she going to get there? And she is taken down in the box. And she is going to be awarded a penalty kick. Worcester overcommitted. Left Rice with a running lean. And now Rice is going to get rewarded. Dropping back trying to defend was Abby Showalter. The sophomore defender from Wheaton, Illinois, not able to uh, get the ball away and committed the foul in the box. So Rice will take the penalty shot against Steve. Penalty kick, excuse me. Rice. 
approaches the ball and soft kicks it with the right foot right into the back of the net she had Steve going to the right she put it in a left corner and the Yellow Jackets take the early lead. One to nothing, BW leads Worcester with 22-45 left to play here in the first half. Remember when BW scores, they win. They've been shut out in all five of their losses. Every one of their goals has come in a win thus far. So Rice builds her team lead. She now has five goals on the season. Stewart sends the ball down the field, but Kyra Steef is there to scoop it up for the Scots. She'll walk it out to the top of the box before putting her right foot into it. Rice with the ball once again, looking for Barth. Uh, Barth cut a little bit too early, and the Scots will try and get possession, but it'll last be touched by Hallie Kreese. So Wenzinger will get the throw in for the Jackets. Rice with the ball once again. She works the ball to the top of the box. She's hungry for more after scoring the first goal of the game on a penalty kick. Worcester gets the ball away briefly, but tracking it down is Amanda Donahue, one of the defenders for the Jackets. Alicia Watling had the ball taken away, but Worcester sends it out of bounds into the BW bench. So BW will get a throw in near midfield. Watling with the ball, and she'll send it to the back line, try to regroup the offense. Watling now with the ball, but she is tripped up, and a Worcester will track the ball down and send it out of bounds, forcing a BW throw in. Rice with the ball at the top of the box. She can't retain possession, though. Now Mann's going to try to start something for the Scots. It's Kreez now with the ball. She feeds it up to Wiley, back to Kreez. Kreez puts a right foot into it, trying to slip a pass to her teammate, but the Yellow Jackets were able to turn that attempt away and now send the ball up the field. Stays in bounds until about the 20-yard line and then uh, rolls out. So Worcester will get a throw in, some substitutions for both sides. Teddy Farson enters the game for the Scots as does Grace Gascoigne. Casey Goloboff comes into the game for the Yellow Jackets. Worcester's got their scorers out on the field. Wiley has five goals, as does Kreese. And Teddy Farson has knocked home seven goals in nine games played so far this season. So the scoring line is out for the Scots. Farson battling for the ball near midfield, and it is kicked out of bounds by the Yellow Jackets. It'll be a throw-in for the Scots. Worcester looking for their second win of the season against an Ohio Athletic Conference opponent. They beat Marietta 3-1 in their opener. The Yellow Jackets looking for their third victory over a North Coast Athletic Conference opponent as they've topped both Oberlin 2-1 on September 8th and Hiram 4-0 on September 15th.
another substitution for the Scots coming on now is Kylie Davis Gascoigne tra tra tracks down the ball for the Scots, but she kicks it out of bounds. It'll be thrown in midfield for the Jackets. And we have a, an infraction against BW, so Worcester will get the free kick. Gascoigne and a Farson battling for the ball for the Scots right in front of the Yellow Jacket bench. It's taken away by the BW uh, midfielders. And last touch by the Scots, so BW will get the throw in. BW now with the free kick. Schwade will take the ball. Put her right foot into it. Get it to the top of the box. Shot on a shot towards the net was blocked in front of Steve by one of the defenders. And now Worcester is going to try to work the ball up the field. It's Farson with possession, working one on two against the Yellow Jackets. She'll get the ball over to Ke Kreese. Crees working one on three. She'll get it knocked away momentarily, but now try to retain possession and get towards the end line. Looking for a centering pass. It's not there. And Schwade will take the ball for the Yellow Jackets, but she will not hold possession long as Mann now gets it for the Scots. Trying to track it down is Holly Thompson, the midfielder, but she was unable to do so. Wenzinger will send a pass up the field. And Goloboff will force the issue, but Worcester gets the clear. BW gets possession again near midfield and will try to set things up once again. Wenzinger on the right side. Keeps the ball in bounds. Works to the top of the box, but it gets kicked away by one of the Scots. And now a battle near midfield controlled by Worcester that's Farson she gets it to Kreese back to Farson she had a clear lane to the net but the ball sailed a little bit wide so she is going to try and center it to one of her teammates cross it rather to one of her teammates Kreese gets it knocked away tried to challenge Wenzinger but Wenzinger controls possession up to Barth. Now to Rice. Rice doing some nifty ball handling, trying to find a lane. It's not there, but she will pass to Goloboff. Or the ball will roll in on net to Steve. She will scoop it up, put the right foot into it, and punt it away. Rice again with possession, but it'll be taken away by the Scots. Gascoigne in the midfield with possession briefly. Now Goloboff takes it away for the Yellow Jackets. Watling back to Goloboff. Goloboff working it into the box. Still retains possession. Now tries to reset. Feed now goes to Regal. Regal to Goloboff on the berth. She heads it towards the net, but it goes wide to the left of the net. Good possession by the Yellow Jackets. They were able uh, to get a good look at the net, but there was a little bit of traffic in front. Now we have some substitutions.
Bailey Hall and Anna Wolfinger check in for the Yellow Jackets. Shot from well beyond the, the top of the box. It's a Yellow Jacket goal. And send it in. No surprise there. It's Sydney Rice with the score. That's her second tally of the evening. And her sixth on the campaign. She took possession uh, just outside the box. Rocketed it towards the net into the far back corner. And Steve could not get the diving save. BW now takes a 2-0 lead here late in the first half. Kylie Davis, Katie Shoemaker, and Claire Horansky check into the game for the Scots. Seeing their first action. BW will have a free kick from their side of midfield. And they're looking to add on to a two-goal lead here. Sydney Rice with both goals. Andrea Scatino. Controls it for the Yellow Jacket. She'll feed it up the field. It's to Bailey Hall. Hall tripped up, and the ball is sent into the Worcester bench by the Scots, so BW will have a throw in. Wolfinger with the ball. She'll send it up the field that goes to Rice. Rice battling through the midfield. She's tripped up. No call. Hall will take possession. She'll send it into the box. It'll be scooped up by Steve, and possession will go the way of the Fighting Scots. Worcester with possession. It won't last long as Hall steps up in the play, knocks it away, feeds a teammate up the field as Golubov. She'll put a right foot into it. It'll be blocked and turned away by one of the Scott defenders. Horansky with the ball. She'll get it to Katie Shoemaker. Mocker, excuse me. And now Wiley will get the ball. She's looking for Farson. Initially, the Yellow Jackets will stop it. Now, Katie Scott will scoop up the loose ball and reset things for BW. She'll punt it away with the right foot, and it'll be Ella Barth battling for the ball. She'll get Wolfinger will get possession now and swing it back to Barth. Barth to the middle, it goes. She overshoots Golubov, and the Scots will track it down. Last touched out of bounds by BW. The College of Worcester will get a throw in. BW briefly takes possession, but it goes out of bounds off of one of the Yellow Jackets. So again, Worcester with a throw in front of their own bench. BW there to take possession, however, as Wolfinger sends it up to midfield, overshoots Barth, and now the Scots will battle for possession. Horansky with the ball. Tries to get it past Barth. Nothing doing. Barth there to turn it away and start an offensive attack for the Yellow Jackets. Regal feeds Rice. Rice tripped up again. This time not in the box. But it will be another free kick for the Yellow Jackets. Less than nine minutes to go here in the first half from Trestle Field. Matt Florjancic along for the call. BW has a 2-0 lead over the College of Worcester. Wolfinger puts a right foot into it for the crossing pass. 
path. It's headed out of the box by the Scots and now last touch by the Jackets. It'll be College of Worcester throw in. Farson trying to get possession for the Scots, but unable to do so. And the Yellow Jackets will get a throw in. Two more substitutions to report. Kaylee Neal and Michelina Rush are the substitutions for the Yellow Jackets. Adds a little bit of offense, a little bit more offense, as Rush has scored twice in nine games for a total of four points. She's shooting at a 60% clip. Glaza with the ball. She sends it up the field. She'll get it back and now head it up the field looking for one of her teammates, but Wolfinger is there to uh, momentarily take it away. The Yellow Jackets will send it back to Scott, and she will send the right foot into it and get the ball out to midfield. Golubov with control over to Barth on the right side. Barth with Rice out top, unable to get it to her, but the Yellow Jackets will retain possession. Wolfinger with the ball. Right foot it into the box. It's headed out by one of the Scots. Golubov will send it back in. Michelina Rush battling Kelsey Stone for the ball. And BW will get possession. BW not sitting on this 2 nothing lead. They are trying desperately to get another good look at the net here before this half runs out. Donahue comes up from her defensive spot to get the ball up the field. The Scots are there to take it away. Teddy Farson with possession now. Worcester trying to get anything going right now. And now it's a two-on-two. -two before the Yellow Jackets can get back defensively. Farson tried to slip it to a teammate. Donahue said, nope, thank you. I'll take care of that and sends it up the field. Although the Scots do retain possession now. Coming up from the defensive spot is Lily Glaza. She's hustling down the field and she'll retain possession for the Scots. Kick it off of one of the Yellow Jackets. But the referee will call an infraction and that will be a throw in for the Yellow Jackets. Michelina Rush tracking the ball down. She's working against Kelsey Stone. Stone's going to win that battle. Worcester moves the ball upfield. It's Katie Schumacher with the ball. Unable to get anything going, though, and BW will take possession back. Golubov battles for it near the midfield stripe. She'll leave it out there for Bailey Hall. But she left it go a little bit too long and out of bounds, so the Scots will get a throw in now. Ellie Segudo comes into the game for the Scots. Both teams not afraid to use their bench, and both teams have pretty potent offensive weapons still on that bench. Uh, Ru Rice with the ball, tried to get it into the box, but it was knocked away by one of the Scots. Now BW will get a throw in. Under four minutes to go here in half number one. Farson unable to win the battle for the Scots. BW will get possession now near midfield. Golubov over to Wolfinger. Wolfinger lofts it towards one of her teammates. Rice is going to head 
the ball away. And she's going to put her right foot into it, but she put a little bit too much hook on it. And that ball sails wide and left. A goal kick for the Scots coming up. Steve puts her right foot into it and moves it up the field for the Scots. Out of bounds, however, last touched by the Scots, so BW gets another throw in. Barth battles for it and wins it over to Wolfinger. Now it goes to Rice. Rice gets knocked down, still retains possession briefly before the Scots can wrest the ball away from her. Lily Glaza with the ball now. She's looking for the throne for the Scots. She was looking for Farson, but went a little bit too long, so Donahue uh, took it away for the Yellow Jackets. Then Andrea Scatino moved it up the field. But Gascoin is there to take away the ball for the Scots. And Worcester's looking for anything offensively right now in these last two minutes of play in the first half. Uh, their lone scoring chance of the first half came when Mann was set up at the top of the box and rocketed a right footer just over the net. Worcester to take the free kick. Glaza with the ball. Puts a left foot into it. Tries to get it up the field. Katie Schumacher now with the ball. She sets up Farson. Farson's driving and has a shot blocked right inside the box. Good bit of hustle right there by Amanda Donahue to... Uh, prevent the shot on goal. Worcester with the throw in. One minute to go here in the first half. Now BW will have the throw in. Hall with the ball. Out top she gets the ball to midfield but Glaze is there to take it away. Kylie Davis tried to retain possession for the Scots near midfield, but she sent it over uh, everybody's head and off uh, past the end line. So it'll be a goal kick for the Yellow Jackets. Maybe. <laughs> We're running out of time here in the first half. That's the end of the first half. BW leads the College of Worcester two to nothing here from Trestle Field at George Finney Stadium. I'm Matt Florjancic on the call for today's game between BW and the College of Worcester. The big difference in the first half, Sidney Rice and scoring chances. Those are the two things that have led the BW Yellow Jackets to their 2-0 lead here as we start the 15-minute halftime show. 15-minute halftime break, excuse me. Rice got the scoring initiated when she was driving along the right side of the box and was taken down for an awarded a penalty kick on that play. She put the right foot into it and with Steve diving to the right of the net, it was Rice who slipped it past her with a soft shot into the left back corner of the net and that came at the 3142 mark of the first half and then at the 2216 mark rice again 
found the back of the net when from just outside the top of the box she rocketed a shot into the far right corner of the net again beating a diving Steef for the goal so that's where we are after one half of play BW in front of the College of Worcester two to nothing so far in the game Steve has turned away one of the three shots the Yellow Jackets have put on net and on the flip side the Worcester Fighting Scots have yet to register a shot on goal and again Worcester had an opportunity to take a lead early in this game when they set up uh, Naomi Mann right at the top of the box with a clear shooting lane but she sailed it just high of the net and as for scoring chances other than that BW was able to drop four and five defenders at a time and prevent Worcester from getting a clean look at Katie Scott the freshman goalkeeper for the Yellow Jackets Individually, Rice leads the way for BW. She's taken five of the six shots, and three of them have ended up on goal, two of which have ended up in the back of the net. Uh, Ella Barth with the other shot uh, registered for the Yellow Jackets. Nobody else with a shot on goal besides Sydney Rice. Casey Gulliboff also has one shot. We're going to step away for a few minutes, and when we come back, we're going to have the second half of action here between the Worcester Fighting Scots and the Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets. It's non-conference women's soccer action tonight, ladies and gentlemen, from Trestle Field at George Finney Stadium here on the campus of Baldwin Wallace University. We'll be back after a short break.
Welcome back to Trestle Field here at the George Finney Stadium on the campus of Baldwin Wallace University. I'm Matt Florjancic alongside you for the call of today's non-conference women's soccer game between the Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets and the College of Worcester Fighting Scots. Uh, as we approach the second half, the BW Yellow Jackets will look to hold a two-goal lead as they lead two to nothing heading into the second half. But before we get that underway, I want to remind everybody that it's Bold and Gold homecoming weekend at Baldwin Wallace College, Baldwin Wallace University, excuse me, this weekend. This has been a long time coming after the 2020 fall season was shortened and switched to spring. So it's a lot of your first opportunities in the community and the alumni community to come back to Baldwin Wallace University and see all the improvements that have been made on campus in recent years. Uh, everybody thinks about football when it comes to homecoming, but there are plenty of other events uh, if you don't plan on attending Saturday afternoon's game between Baldwin Wallace and Capital University. And those festivities get underway uh, for the students actually tomorrow with a uh, rally here at the George Finney Stadium. But uh, for everyone, uh, it gets underway in earnest on Friday as the BW Symphony Orchestra hosts a Friday night concert uh, and the Ritter Library all throughout the day Saturday will feature an exhibit called 1971 the other year that changed everything and that will be featured throughout the day the musical theater uh, company will perform a Disney showcase on Saturday morning and while the homecoming festivities go on throughout the weekend, the actual Bold and Gold Festival begins on the North Quad at 1130 a.m. on Saturday with street fair food, activity tents, game, games and entertainment for all ages. Picnic tickets are $10 for a lunch provided by the BW Dining. And that lunch includes street tacos, roasted corn on the cob, burgers, hot dogs, and much, much more. The teams are loosening up after their halftime breaks and huddling up before they take the field here for the second half. The College of Worcester once again in their road to black uniforms with gold lettering numerals and sleeves. BW in their home white uniforms with brown lettering and numerals and gold trim around both. BW will go from right to left across your computer screens here in this second half, the College of Worcester will go from left to right. BW again holds a 2 to nothing lead over the College of Worcester. Worcester was riding a three-game winning streak coming into tonight's game and has a 5-4 and four overall record. BW has won three of their last four coming into tonight and are 4-5 and five on the campaign. BW will have the second half opening possession. The referee gives a signal and we're underway again from the George Finney Stadium trestle field, everyone. Stewart will possess the ball for the Yellow Jackets. She'll try to get it over to the uh, left sideline, but the Scots will knock it out of bounds, so BW will get a throw in. Taking that throw in is Andrea Scatino. She gets the ball to uh, Alicia Watling. Alicia Watling, excuse me. And now to Regal. Regal will get the ball over to Brandy Phillippe. And now it'll drop back to one of the Yellow Jacket defenders who will send it up looking for Sidney Rice. Rice with the two goals on the evening for the Yellow Jackets. The Scots get the clear. But the ball goes out of bounds, and it will be a throw in for BW. Scatino throws it in, and it's an infraction against the Yellow Jackets, so Worcester will get a free kick. That will be Kelsey Stone, one of the defenders for the Scots, who will get the free kick, who will take the free kick, excuse me. She puts a right foot into it, gets it in across midfield and into BW territory, but the Yellow Jackets will take it away.
Barth with the ball on the far side. And coming up from the defensive spot is Anna Wenzinger. And Wenzinger will deflect it off of one of the Scots. So BW will get the throw in, and Wenzinger will take it. Brandy Phillippe with the ball. Over to Donahue. Now the Yellow Jackets looking to set things up as Scatino gets the ball over to Regal and then right back to Scatino. Now Scatino drives with the left foot, sends it on net. Stewart had a chance at it, but had to lunge for it and was unable to direct it towards the net. The Scots now will charge back the other way. It's a four-on-four four opportunity for the Scots. Crees with the ball. She'll try to step around a defender, but Donahue's making her work for it. And they are going to battle back and forth. The referee will signal for a free kick just outside the box and is a yellow card issued. That, hand, uh, that yellow card will go against one of the yellow jackets. Stone puts the left foot into it, kicks it to the top of the box. The Scots will retain possession. It's Crees with the ball. Now it's taken away by the Yellow Jackets, and they will send it down the field. Stewart hustling after it. The one on three, but still making the Scots work for possession. Now stepping up in the play. That's Regal, and she will take possession in the corner. Working against one of the Scott defenders. It is sent over to Glaza, and she will send it out of bounds. But it hit off of one of the Yellow Jackets, so Glaza will actually take the throw in for Worcester. Scatino dropping back for the Yellow Jackets. She takes the ball away. Now sends a pass up to Watling. Watling working the ball up the sideline. It's last touch by Worcester from the midfield stripe. Watling will throw it in. She'll get it sent back to her and look to set it up for the Yellow Jackets as Sidney Rice got the ball in the middle of the field. Tried to redirect it, but didn't get much on it, and... Kyra Steef was able to scoop it up for the Scots before punting it towards midfield. Worcester called for an infraction, so BW will get a free kick. It was sent towards the box, but Worcester will turn it away. Now looking to move the ball up the field is Myora Wiley. She's got Crees with her, but it's taken away briefly. Now it goes back to Wiley, trying to hit Crees with a pass, unable to do so. And now Crees is going to try and track down a deflection. She puts a shot on that. And it is stopped by Katie Scott. Scott was in the perfect position for that save. And she punted the ball away. Watling with the ball now. Barth with some nifty ball handling. Gets around a defender trying to get to the box. Sends a pass into the box. But it's batted away by the Scots.
Worcester gets a free kick. Kelsey Stone who took it. Last touched out of bounds by the Scots. Worcester will, or BW rather, will get the throw in. Scatino stepping in to take that. She sends Watling in to set things up. Barth battling for the ball, fighting two Worcester Scots, unable to retain possession. Now Lily Glaza with the ball, gets it over to Wiley. Wiley, one of the leading scorers here for the Scots. She's out there with Teddy Farson, who has a team leading seven goals. Wiley has five, as does Crees. Scott will get the ball up the field. It goes to Rice. Rice heads the ball over to Natalie Stewart. Stewart controls it to the right of the box. Not a Barth. Barth in the box. Back to Stewart. Stewart tries to get a pass to cross the box, but it is kicked out of or out of the end line. So it'll be the first corner of the evening for either team, and it will be taken by the Yellow Jackets doing the honors defender in a Wenzinger. Wenzinger puts the right foot into it. Beautiful crossing pattern is knocked away by Steve. Steve was not going to let the Yellow Jackets get a look. And now Farson tries to move it up the field, but Brandy Phillippe is there to send it in and make the Scots regroup. And BW forcing the issue here, and they get a throw in as a result. Barth on the far sideline, unable to control the possession, and it'll lead to a throw in for Worcester. Eight minutes gone here in the second half. BW still leading Worcester two to nothing. Rice with the ball, just past midfield, tried to slip a pass to a teammate, but Scott's read the read the play and uh, knocked it away very briefly. But BW will get possession back. Barth charges up the right side of the field, working against Glaza. She'll send a crossing pass in, but it's kicked away. And now leading the way for the Scots is Gascoigne. Worcester gets behind the defense of Anna Wenzinger very briefly. It's Farson with possession. She'll send it over to Wiley. Wiley from the top of the box slips it to Gascoin. Scott comes out of the net and knocks the ball away before a shot can get put on net. BW will be awarded a free kick there. But excellent play by Scott. She saw Gascoigne streaking up the right side and, and rather than sit back and try to wait to make a save on a shot, she stepped up in the box and prevented that shot from even happening. Stewart tried to get possession of the ball, uh, but it was last touched by her, so Worcester will get a throw in. It's Stone taking the throw, and she's looking for Kreese. Kreese tried to hit a crossing pass. Not there. BW there to take away possession. Barth with the ball, trying to get it to Rice near midfield. Rice will track it down, keep it in bounds, and absolutely have an awful collision with Teddy Farson. And we are going to have a stoppage in play. Rice had a full head of steam. Farson stepped up. Excuse me, that's not Farson.
Holly Thompson comes back into the game now. She will replace Abby Showalter, who is able to jog off to the bench where she is being further attended to by the College of Worcester athletic training staff. Casey Goloboff back into the ball game for the Yellow Jackets. Free kick for BW from midfield. Ball sails through to Stewart. Stewart over to Goloboff. It's taken away. Holly Thompson. But uh, Watling is there to take it back for the Yellow Jackets. Watling now out top. She puts the right foot into it and sails it wide right. Alicia Watling from well outside the box had a very clean look and was unable uh, to cash in as she put it towards the right corner but it sailed just wide I want to apologize to Miss Watling because I have pronounced her name several different ways uh, tonight and I apologize for the mispronunciations Farson with the ball for the Scots. She sends it over to Kelsey Stone. Stone puts her right foot into it, swings it over to Wiley. Wiley can't retain possession, though. And the Yellow Jackets will battle for it near midfield. That's Bella Regal. She gets it over to Barth. Barth puts her right foot into it, gets it to Stewart. Stewart in the middle. Gets it into the box. Sends a pass out wide right. Back to Barth. Barth out top. It goes to Philippi. She tried the centering pass. It wasn't there. But Scatino there to take it right back for the Yellow Jackets. They keep up the pressure. Watling trying to track it down on the left side. She'll get there. But it'll roll out of bounds. Last touch by her. That'll be a goal kick for the Scots. Wiley with the ball for the Scots. She'll find Maya McDonald, who will then try to get it right back to Wiley. She's put too much power behind that kick, though. Wiley had a step on a defender. She's had several steps on a defender. But the pass sailed wide and out of bounds, so BW will get the throw in. They'll give it right back to the Scots. And now Wiley's going to try to track down another long and powerful pass. But that one goes over the end line, and BW's Katie Scott will get the goal kick. Scott puts a right foot into it and gets it up close to midfield, but the Yellow Jackets will not retain possession. Now it's Farson pushing the issue for the Scots. She's the leading goal scorer on the Scots team with seven. She puts a shot on net. It's partially blocked and then a follow-up shot is blocked and sent out of bounds. BW with another goal kick opportunity. Scott finds Barth now to Goloboff who heads the ball over to Stewart. Stewart slips a pass to a teammate. And BW had a good run, but Worcester was able to regroup and get the defense back. Goloboff tra tracks it down, but the referee is going to say that she lost control out of bounds, so it'll be a throw in for the Scots. Watling has a brief conversation with the official, uh, initiated by the official. And Worcester gets the throw in. Gascoigne hustles through midfield, slips it to Farson. Farson's got a two-on-one. 
kicks it into the box. It's battered away briefly onto the foot of Wiley, but she can't control it, and the Yellow Jackets will get the clear. Barth hustles after it along the far sideline. She gets it to Stewart. Stewart approaching the corner. She puts on the brakes, saves it from going over the end line, slips it past the defender. Now sends it over to Goldoff. Redirection is saved by Kyra Steef. Excellent ball movement right there by the Yellow Jackets, but Steef able to get in front of that shot. And she had a little bit of help from the defense as they were able to make that a very difficult attempt that Goldoff couldn't get much behind. Substitution for both teams. It's Bailey Hall coming back onto the field for the Yellow Jackets. Bailey Farrell comes into the game for the Scots. Wenzinger with the throw in. She'll lob it over to Goloboff, who will head it down the field, but tracking it down for the Scots, Kylie Davis. Now Hall will try to restart for the Yellow Jackets. It's on the foot of Stewart. Stewart into the box. Puts the left foot into it. It's blocked. Brandy Phillippe followed up with a shot from well beyond the box, but she sent it wide, and now it'll be a goal kick for the Scots, the Fighting Scots. It'll be Kyra Steef putting the right foot into it, and she sends it over to Stone. Amanda Donahue there to bat it away for the Yellow Jackets very briefly, and now Worcester has an advantage. Crees breaks free behind the Yellow Jacket defense, but Scott is there to scoop it up before she can get a clean look, and Scott will throw the ball up the field. It gets over to Hall. Hall's unable to control it, now hustling after it. That's Bella Regal. Regal slips it over. Back to Hall. Hall sidesteps the defender, now looking to get the ball in the box. She has it taken away. And Wiley now ends up with the ball. She won't hold it for long as Scatino pushes the issue. Scatino tried to get a, a crossing pass. It wasn't there. It was battered away by the Scots. Now BW will regroup. They'll drop back into their own end and regroup. Wenzinger tried to right foot the ball over to Ella Barth, but it sailed wide, and now Worcester gets a throw in from inside or in front of the Yellow Jacket bench. Teddy Farson now pushes the issue for the Scots, but the Yellow Jackets step up and they'll take possession away. Alexa Bensick turns it away for the Scots. Now Kylie Davis tries to get the ball up the field. It's Wiley in the midfield. Wiley looking for Farson, and now Crees. Crees gets step out, gets Scott to step out. Tries to slip a pass to Farson just a little bit too wide of the net. That had goal written all over it, but the Worcester Scots get the unfortunate bounce, and the Yellow Jackets get the fortunate one uh, to keep this a 2 to nothing lead. Worcester's coming after BW, though. BW's going to have to continue to attack and try to put up more goals if they hope to hold on to what would be their third victory over a North Coast Athletic Conference opponent this season. They have previously have beaten Oberlin 2-1 and Hiram 4-0. The Scots looking to make it two straight this year over Ohio Athletic Conference teams as they began the year with a 3-1 excuse me, win over Marietta. Sh 
squad A set up to take the free kick for the Yellow Jackets. Bluffs the start now. She's going to put her right foot into it. She gets good distance on it, gets it to the box. It's knocked away by one of the Scots. And there's going to be an infraction on the Yellow Jackets, so it'll be a free kick for Worcester. Worcester with one of their best scoring chances of the night on their previous possession as they had their two of their leading scorers, Kreese and, and Farson, breaking loose with a two-on-one, but they were unable to cash it in. Let's see what they do on this one. It's Wiley now kicking the ball up the field and letting it go out of bounds. The Yellow Jackets let it sail over the end line. It'll be a goal kick for Katie Scott. Katie Schumacher and Ellie Segudo back in the game for B or for Worcester. Sydney Rice is back into the game for the Yellow Jackets, and Sydney has been the offense tonight for BW as she has scored both goals, first on a penalty kick and then on one from well outside the box. Farson trying to get Worcester going offensively. She puts a shot toward the net, but it is knocked away by a defender, and BW will get the goal kick. BW with a throw in now on the near sideline. Scatino over to Regal. Regal now over to Hall, but Hall stepped out of bounds with the ball, and Worcester will get a throw in. Segudo will take it for the Scots. She'll find Kreese. Kreese now over to Schumacher. Schumacher working the ball up to Farson, but it's taken away by Wenzinger for the Yellow Jackets, and there is going to be a stoppage in play. And Wenzinger uh, gets back to her feet and tries to loosen herself up after uh, getting taken down there. Wenzinger critical to this Yellow Jacket team. She does a majority of the throw-ins, and she's also able to step up and help ignite an offense from her defender position. Scatino tried to track it down, but will be unable to do so, so the Scots will get the throw in. Right at the midfield stripe. Schumacher over to McDonald. McDonald now over to Glaza. Glaza finds Farson in the box, but the official will... Whistle a call against Worcester, so BW will get the ball. Free kick, but BW unable to retain possession. It's Farson out top. Slips a pass to Kreez. Scatino puts herself between a freeze and the ball. That gives Scott enough time to come out of the net and dive on the ball before a shot can get put on goal. Scott punts the ball away with her right foot. And she will punt it out of bounds right at the midfield stripe where Glaza will do the honors for the throw in for Worcester. Stewart now pushes the ball up the field for the Yellow Jackets. Puts a, oh, put, tried to put a right foot into it. Uh, got crossed up and momentarily slipped on the turf the ball went one way she went the other it sailed over the end line and that'll result in a goal kick for for the scots and a wolfinger will come on to the pitch for the yellow jackets and she'll replace anna wenzinger hall with the ball she'll put her left foot into it but it'll be wide of the net Steve again will get a goal kick for the Scots. Steve 
Steve puts her right foot into it. And the Scots will get a throw in now as the Yellow Jackets had the last touch. Segudo will throw the ball in for the Scots. BW will step right in and take that possession away. Scatino moves it up to Stewart. Stewart will not be able to track it down as Alexa Bensick will track it down for the Scots. But she will send it out of bounds and that will lead to a throw in for BW. Wolfinger check, tracks down the ball on the far side. She swings it over to Barth. Barth trying to keep it in bounds, unable to do so. It'll be a throw in for the Scots deep in their own territory. We are approaching the 19 minute mark here at Trestle Field at the George Finney Stadium on the campus of Baldwin Wallace University. The Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets hold a 2 0 lead over the College of Worcester Fighting Scots here in non conference women's soccer action. Matt Florjancic along with you for the call of tonight's game. Worcester gets a free kick, and they'll move it up the field where Glaza tries to set up Schumacher driving towards the net but was turned away by a BW defender. And BW now looking to make something happen. It's Hall. Hall on the near side. Tries to center it to, to Stewart, unable to do so. However, rocketing a shot towards the net is Bella Regal on the rebound, and she... Uh, sends it wide left, so that will result in a goal kick for Steef. Another substitution for the Jackets. Hall goes out, and a Watling comes in. Rice tried to track it down for the Yellow Jackets, unable to do so. Farson now. Working in the midfield, trying to get possession for the Scots. Time is running short for this Worcester team. If they're going to mount a comeback, they, they are going to have to get some offense going in short order here. BW will get a free kick after that infraction. Haley Schwade will take the kick. Schwede puts her right foot into it. She lofts a pass. It's headed towards Bar Barth with the header, and she scores! Oh, Barth with a beautiful goal. Times her leap perfectly and sends it past Steve for the goal. Great feed by Schwede and Barth coming up with the third goal of the night for the Yellow Jackets. It's 3 to nothing. They lead the College of Worcester. Schumacher will kick it off for the Scots. The Scots will send it out of bounds. Scatino will enter it over to Watling. Watling trying to track it down. She was battling with Kreis, and it will go out of bounds off of Watling, so Worcester will get the ball. Kreis trying to hustle after it. Looking for a crossing pass. It's not there, and the deflection goes off of her out of bounds. So that will be a turnover in possession, and BW gets a throw in. They will not, however, hold possession for long as the Scots will get it right back. McDonald with the ball. Over to Schumacher. Schumacher fakes a pass. Now dribbles into the box. She continues to dribble. Puts a shot toward the net, but it hits the side of the netting. And that will result in a goal kick for the Yellow Jackets. Katie Scott. 
15.45 to go in this second half. BW with a commanding 3 to nothing lead. Scott's kick sails into the other end of the field where Worcester will track it down. But they will not retain possession as the kick goes out of bounds. And Scatino will do the honors of the throw in for the Yellow Jackets. She does so, but Holly Thompson is there to step in front. She tried a feed to uh, Teddy Farson, but was a little bit too strong on the pass. And Katie Scott will track down the ball for BW. Wolfinger will get the ball on the throw in. Michelina Rush comes back into the ball game and she'll relieve uh, Natalie Stewart. Scatino tracks down the loose ball for the Yellow Jackets up to Watling. Now Scatino will take the throw in. Barth per pursued the ball and she tripped up Glaza. The official stops play and awards Worcester a free kick. Bensick puts the right foot into it, sends it uh, close to the box. Now the Scots are trying to get back toward the box after retaining possession. Schumacher with the ball. She'll dribble around a defender, put the, put the brakes on, and then try a crossing pass. She gets it to Segudo. Segudo. Sends it into the box, but only white uniforms are around that, and BW will take possession. Watling battling for the ball, and she earns possession for the Yellow Jackets with the hustle play. Free kick sails away from all the Yellow Jackets, and the Scots will track it down. It's Kylie Davis tracking it down now. Schumacher heads it in it into the attack zone. Farson looking to battle for it, and she will be whistled for an infraction. BW gets another free kick. Schwade takes the free kick for the Yellow Jackets. The ball will eventually roll out of bounds, so it'll be a throw in for the Fighting Scots. Maura Wiley comes into the game for Worcester. She checks in for Crees. Worcester with a throw in. Watling heads it toward the net, but Worcester retains possession. Farson with the ball across midfield. She'll get a crossing pass to Bailey Farrell, but Farrell sends it across the end line, and that will result in another goal kick for Katie Scott. Under 11 minutes to go now in the game. BW leads 3 to nothing. 
and a Wenzinger back into the game for the Yellow Jackets. Glaza sends a pass over to Bensick. Bensick tracks it down. Back to Glaza. Now over to Kylie Davis. Davis reverses field, gets the ball up to Holly Thompson. Now Wiley's trying to track it down. She's got to step on a defender. She'll get there. It's in the box now, just outside the box. As Wiley drives toward the net, and Wiley is going to get awarded a free kick. And that was extremely close to getting a penalty kick awarded because that is literally inches away from the box. Katie Schumacher will take the free kick. A modest two-person wall for the Yellow Jackets. Schumacher puts a left foot into it, and it is loose in the box, but it's going to roll over the end line. And that will be the first corner kick of the evening for the Worcester Fighting Scots. Taking that kick will be Myora Wiley. Wiley puts the right foot into it, and it goes right into the Yellow Jacket defense. But Haley Schwade was unable to control it, and it will give Worcester another corner kick. Wiley re-tees the ball, tries to send it into the box. It's batted away by the Yellow Jackets, but Wiley is there to get possession back. Maya McDonald had a beat on the ball for the Scots, but she was taken down by one of the Yellow Jackets, and it will be another free kick for the Scots. And they are inching ever closer to getting a penalty kick as they have gotten fouls now on either side of the box, less than a ball length away from being inside that box. The official marching off some steps to see that the BW uh, defenders have the proper space from the free kick, and he deems that they do. So Worcester will get the free kick. They'll set up for a long shot toward the net, and it sails just over the crossbar and rests on top of the net. So BW will get a goal kick, and there'll be another substitution for the Yellow Jackets. Barth trying to battle for the ball near midfield. She's going against Kylie Davis, and... A Barth will lose it as the ball will go out of bounds. So Glaza will take the throw in for the Scots right in front of her own bench. She'll get it to Wiley. Wiley tried to get it back to one of her teammates, but BW stepped in the passing lane and was able to uh, stop that potential rally by stealing away the possession. Steve will put the right foot into it, and she'll punt it up towards midfield where the Yellow Jackets will briefly get possession and then battle the Scots, and now there will be an infraction whistled against the Yellow Jackets, so it will be a free kick for the Worcester Fighting Scots. Bensick took the free kick, and... Worcester got a look on the net, but Scott was able to tip the ball over the net. And that will result in another goal kick for Scott. Approaching the six-minute mark left in this game. Scott puts the right foot into it. And Watling will try to track it down, but the pass from one of her teammates sailed wide and out of bounds, so Worcester will take the throw in. But before that, we have a substitution. That 
it's Natalie Stewart back on the pitch for the Yellow Jackets. Naomi Mann back on for Worcester. Worcester will get a throw in. It'll be Zagudo lobbing it to one of her teammates, but Watling was there to bat it away. Now Mann will control it for the Scots. She'll try to slip it to Wiley. Wiley gets it, and she gets briefly slide side tackled um, by Wenzinger. Man did not like that, and she took exception to Wiley taking the hit, and she put Wenzinger right down on the turf, and that will result in a free kick for the Yellow Jackets. Defending a teammate comes at a price sometimes, and man paid that one as she uh, was whistled for the infraction. No cards issued, though. Both both sides were picking up the physicality, so the referee uh, just awarded the the infraction with no cards awarded. Stewart trying to gain position in the box. She's unable to do so. BW will retain possession very briefly, and now Farson will pick it up for the Scots. She'll get the ball over to Farrell. And it's knocked out of bounds by one of the Jackets, so Farson will throw it in. Not before a substitution, however. That's Claire Horansky back on for the, the Scots. Shot on net. Wiley puts it right in the middle but Scott is there to corral it for the save. She'll walk it to the top of the box, then launch a punt with the right foot. It'll be off one of the yellow jackets, so that'll be Worcester throwing. Sagudo will find Schumacher. Schumacher pumps the brakes and then gets it over to Wiley on the right side. Wiley gets around Wenzinger. Now puts a crossing pass into the box. It's Mann with the right foot, and she sends it just over the crossbar. Another opportunity goes by the wayside for the Scots as they continue to pressure this Bowling Wallace team, but they don't have anything to show for it on the scoreboard. BW can't retain possession off of the goal kick, and now the Scots uh, in the middle of the field. It's Horansky over to Farson. Horansky steps up, tries to get it to Wiley. It skips over her, but Mann will track it down. She and Wenzinger will meet at the ball and it is going to go past the end line so Worcester will get the corner kick two minutes to go Segudo will take the corner for the Scots she puts the right foot into it header by Farson not there but the Scots are able to clean up the rebound, and it's Katie Schumacher there to send it into the back of the net past Katie Scott. Good positioning there by Schumacher. She knew where the rebound would come. She stepped up and was able to rocket a right footer right past Scott for the goal. Wusser gets on the board with less than two minutes left, 151 to go. In the second half, it's BW3, Worcester 1. Schumacher now takes possession again. She hits it over to Farson. Farson's tripped up. Wolfinger tripped her up. And there is going to be a stoppage in play and a yellow card issued against one of the Yellow Jackets. That'll result in another free kick for the Scots. And they've been knocking on the door with these free kicks throughout the evening. If they get one to go here, it'll be an interesting last 91 seconds. <laughs> 
the official is setting up the wall, or letting BW set up the wall. And he sent one player away. They were a little bit heavy. Shot in on net off the free kick, and that's a goal for the Scots. Stepping over the ball was Lily Glaza, and then rocketing it home for the tally was Katie Schumacher. So that's her second in less than five minutes. And now we have a three to two game as BW is now clinging to a one to one goal lead with 128 to go in the game. And there are three substitutions on the field for the Yellow Jackets. That's Sydney Rice. That's Andrea Scatino coming on two of the three players coming on and Bella Regal number 32 comes on as well Regal with the ball in midfield it's blocked away by Schumacher and Worcester starting to press again Stewart with the ball right foots it down the field for Barth Barth is hustling after it against Glaza Barth will control it she kicks it to the top of the box where man is there to take it away for the Scots now Farson with the ball Farson sidesteps the defender, looking to move it across the center line, and she does. But she turns it over, and now the Scots will try and push again. Bensick with the ball. She was looking for Wiley. Her pass sailed over the head of everybody, and Scott will scoop it up. Less than a minute to play, 45 seconds left. Scott right foots the ball down the field, and it is kicked out of bounds by one of the Scots, so BW will get the throw in. Worcester trails by one, three to two, but still plenty of time left to get one good run in to try and tie this game up. Farson battling for the ball near midfield. The Scots will control it. Outlet pass goes long, and Scott will come out of the net, and she will take possession of the ball. There's 10 seconds left. She'll right foot it to midfield. And it will roll out of bounds. But the Scott or the Yellow Jackets will get the victory over the Fighting Scots, who made things very interesting over those last 90 seconds as they scored twice in the latter stages of this game. But it wasn't enough as the header from Ella Barth early in the second half proved to be Rice and then Barth with the game at George Finney Stadium on the campus of Baldwin Wallace University. It's BW3, the College of Worcester 2. BW improves to 5-5 five and five on the season, and they will begin conference play on Saturday afternoon down in Bexley when they take on the Capitol Crusaders. The Worcester Fighting Scots fall to 5-5 five and five overall. They are now 0-3 oh on the road. Thank you, everyone, for tuning into tonight's contest. I'm Matt Florjancic reminding you to make today better than yesterday and make tomorrow better than today. Have a great night, everybody.